What's up, YouTube? Capital G here, checking out the brand new Mochumi Monster that just got revealed coming out of the Rage of the Abyss Core Booster set. This is probably going to be one of the most meta impactful cards that we have seen in the last decade. I know you guys have already seen this on social media, Twitter, Reddit, Facebook. I know you've seen other Yugi tubers talk about it. Believe the hype, people. Everything that people are saying most likely is going to be true this is not hyperbole it's not clickbait this card is going to absolutely change everything about how competitive Yu-Gi-Oh is played and personally i think it's for the better now i do apologize i was supposed to drop this video yesterday but i ended up running some errands and getting caught up and then by the time i got home it's just too late but yeah brand new mochumi fuaros it's a level four it's a wing beast wind monster so shout outs to rabina which i guess can search it but you know probably not going to do that all that often it's 100 600 um the attack and defense but stats rarely matter on hand traps the unique effect because everything else i guess with these mochumi monsters like most of the effects are going to stay the same where you have to have no cards on the field to activate them you can only activate two of them in one turn the unique effect of this card each time your opponent special summons a monster or monsters from the main deck or extra deck, immediately draw one card. And obviously, people are losing their minds over that because if you guys have seen how combo decks get down, how mid-range decks get down, you summon from the extra deck a lot. This is not GX era. This is not even, you know, Edison where duels are lasting six, seven, eight turns basically it, like it's not unheard of to summon half your extra deck in your first turn like i know the ricka deck does that a lot so they play 15 extra deck monsters that deck can easily burn through like i don't know 11 of them in the first turn you have decks like uh branded which shouldn't seem or doesn't seem like a deck that summons all that much from its extra deck but you can summon maybe five times from the extra deck with branded in your turn one and then obviously your big combo decks like the Ubel Fiend Smith and the Snake Eye Fiend Smith decks, they're going to be summoning from the extra deck a lot. And what's crazy about this card is just like our current Mochumi monster, well, it's not current yet, but it'll be from Info. There's not a lot to punish this card. Obviously, cards like Ash Blossom, maybe Cross Out, and um, uh, the Card by the Grave can stop it. But what I like about these hand traps is that you can shotgun them. Now, obviously, they're way better if you go seconds. And I like that because. We've done so much complaining about going second, rightfully so in Yu-Gi-Oh, because going first is just busted when you can build a board that's like, you know, stopping your opponent from playing or that has like, you know, eight, ten disruptions. You can essentially floodgate your opponent out of playing, whether it be, you know, branded gimmick puppet. Hell, you could just play gimmick puppets and FTK your opponent. And Konami is making a series of cards specifically designed to go second. You can't use the argument that people use with Maxi of Cap G, but I made my big board and then I might see my opponent. They had no chance. Okay, well, you can't do that with this card because if you have this in going first, which I think is viable. I mean, I think that you can discard it from Black Witch. If you're playing purely, you go first. You can just discard it from a purely, a purely spell. If you're playing Fluanderese, forget searching it from Rabina. You can just send it, uh, banish it for the uh, advent, search another bird or something like that. Um, it's not going to be a card that gives you any value. It's just going to be discard fodder at that point. So I think that making going second uh, better is good. And honestly, I'm just someone, and you guys might say, Cap G, you're a monkey flipper. You are a trap player to the core. Even the deck you play now, Voiceless Voice, ain't really doing all that much from the extra deck. I'm someone who thinks that if your opponent wants to play Rika and they want to summon 13 monsters from their extra deck, turn one, and they want to special summon 40 times, like, they should be punished for that. Like, how do you get to do all of that? And I'm, I'm playing Labyrinth where it's just like, Normal summon, Ariana, set three pass. <laughs> so this card is one that is obviously going to put the fear of God into like all the, the big combo players, all the uh, the mid-range players out there. And you know, I mess around with Sprite too. If someone activated, someone shotgun this against me and I'm playing Sprite, like I'm like, oh God. <laughs> and maybe that's why people are going to say it's broken and unfair. But I look at this card as an unfortunate necessity because going first in Yu-Gi-Oh!, is still 99% preferred. Um, it, we still can do way too much with our, you know, common meta decks, the uh, U-Bells and the Snake Eyes of the world. And I look at this as at least a way to fight back. And, uh, you know, you also can't get like 50 cards 
drone because there is the clause. So I think Konami is um doing like they're doing a good job with at least making these cards uh like have a balance factor and making it so that they don't cover everything like Maxi. So I'm definitely a fan. I think that this card in particular will 100% see meta play. I think it's going to see main deck play. To be honest, because if you go second, it's a god card against anything that isn't Labyrinth, Flew Under Rees, Runic Stun, or Voiceless Voice. And again, there are some decks where if you go first, you can just discard it. You can send it to the graveyard, banish it, and flu for Advent or something like that. But uh, I'm a fan of this new theme. Obviously, the next one should be Banishment and the Graveyard, which that one will be very, very like meta dependent. But the first two, definitely good. And this is the best one by far because Perulia, maybe you get two draws or three if you're super lucky. And you know, maybe well, against Flu, you can get a bunch of draws. But Outside of the flu matchup with Perulia, you get like two draws. This card, it really makes your opponent play awkward. Either they're going to snake eye combo and give you like five cards, or they're going to end on a really crappy board and probably give you at least an SP draw. And if they're just ending on like SP pass, you're probably just OTKing them. Even if they have like SP imperm, you're probably pushing through that board because you got six cards. But whatever you guys think of the next $100 secret rare, which... By the way, I'm just going to throw this out there. This has nothing to do with the actual one. It has a little to do with the card. Does anyone else think that the person, the artist who designed Prank Kids also is designing the Mochimi card? Like, I'm just seeing way too much Prank Kids dropsies when I see the artwork of these cards. Like, I really think that whoever did Prank Kids is also designed, which I'm, I'm here for. I love, I love the design and the artwork of uh, Prank Kids Monsters. And I love these cards, too. They're very cute. Anyways, whatever you guys think, leave it in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching, as always.